thanks for joining us at ITU's headquarters for WISIS Forum 2019, where we are joined by Professor Francois Gray of the University of Geneva. Professor, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, you direct an education program uh, called the uh, Geneva Qingwan Initiative. What can you tell us about it? Right, so this uh, initiative was set up uh, three years ago uh, just after the SDGs were announced, the Sustainable Development Goals, and, and so it's a comprehensive education program for the SDGs to train uh, a young generation to tackle the difficult problems of sustainable development on this planet uh, over the next 15 years. So it's problem-solving skills, isn't it, to address some of the world's biggest issues? Absolutely. So the kind of education we give, of course, there's some of it which is more a traditional classroom, but we uh, really insist that the students, at least half of their time, should be spent uh, in a space where they're solving projects in teams, working closely with mentors from the international organizations here in Geneva who have real field experience, who know what the problems are. And you were here at uh, WISIS Forum 2019 with some of your students, and uh, there was this very popular uh, display involving VR, um, and it was all about uh, VR to help people understand the world's biggest problems a bit better. What can you tell us about it? Right, so virtual reality is, is one of these up-and-coming technologies that we think everybody will have soon, or you know, a very large pr proportion of people, especially in the developing world, will be using all the time. And the idea was to explore with our researchers who are, who are studying the impact of VR, the psychological impact of it, what it could do to help people understand what the future of the planet might look like under different scenarios of development. So if we don't do uh, enough to tackle climate change, we all know uh, that's bad news. But what would it feel like in a VR system to look around and see your world uh, in 2050, uh, your grandchild talking to you about, you know, why are the birds dead and, and so on. So it's, it's really uh, a, a gut feeling that we're trying to generate through this VR demo. And it's been here all week and we've had a, a lot of very positive feedback about this notion of looking into the future through VR to understand the SDGs. And there was also a session focusing on refugee camps, and I think the name of the program is uh, InZone, and it's all about offering tertiary education to uh, youth and young people who spend, for some of them, most of their lives uh, in camps. Exactly. So uh, our university, in collaboration with, with many other institutions, is, is very interested to bring tertiary in education uh, into refugee camps uh, because at the moment, the, the sort of legal status of people in the camps is they, they should have access to primary and secondary education, but there's a blank when it comes to tertiary. Uh, so InZone is essentially like a container full of tools to help uh, young people uh, get that education online. So it's e-learning uh, uh, brought to uh, these kind of extreme conditions, which unfortunately, although extreme, are going to be the life and livelihoods of many young people for many years to come. And let's talk about this very interesting space you've got just across the road from uh, ITU's headquarters. Uh, and it's, uh, it's an SDG space. What does that mean exactly? Right. We call it the SDG solution space. Uh, and we wanted to emphasize that it's about finding solutions. So it's a maker space in modern parlance. But maker means you build things, uh, gadgets, and so on. We wanted to get away from what I would say is a techno-solutionist view of the world. Technology isn't always the solution. Sometimes it's the problem. So we want our students to work on solutions uh, with this close mentorship with the international organizations. Sometimes the solution is a policy change. Sometimes it's a campaign to raise awareness about an issue. Uh, and so our students are working on these solutions with uh, people from the public in Geneva and from the international community. So it's a very open space, um, and we think that's, that's very attractive. And we see in the evenings, on weekends, lots of activity there, lots of young and not so young people from the international organizations, ITU, WTO, WHO, they're all around our block. So they now come in and hang out with us, and uh, that's the kind of solution-based uh, learning we want our students to have. Fantastic. Professor Francois Gray, thank you very much. Thank you.